Hello, happy Friday. This is Jeremy Murphy, and I am here to talk. Got a butterfly in our flowers here. I thought I'd show it to you. Um, welcome to those joining us. Um, please let me know where you're from. Um, tell me where you're from so we know who's joining us. And uh, hello. I know there's some other high quality, uh, um, high quality scopes that are going on right now. I know Michael Hyatt wraps one up about now, so I understand some people might be joining us late. But uh, welcome. Um, my name is Jeremy Murphy, and I am a uh, marathoner. Um, hi, Shannon. There's Misty, our dog. I'm a marathoner, a uh, running coach, um, ultra marathoner, asthmatic. Um, I've had uh, asthma, was diagnosed in uh, 1979 or 1980 when I was about 11 years old and uh, that was a significant blow to me and I did not expect it and I had to uh, learn to deal with the uh, disease, find ways to manage it and I want to give you a um, disclaimer at the outset, I am not a medical doctor. I am a jurist doctor, I'm a lawyer, but that doesn't count for uh, treating asthma or allergies. And so if you have uh, asthma or allergies, you need to make sure that you're getting uh, quality medical help and those people can help you uh, um, manage uh, that disease and allergies. So uh, um, when I found out I had asthma, we also found out that I had uh, food allergies um, and also uh, other allergies, allergies to dust, uh, mold, um, just about every tree, uh, cats, horses. Um, it was very uh, wide ranging, it was eye opening. Um, but there were all these foods that I was allergic to that I couldn't eat anymore. Uh, legumes, um, I was eating a lot of peanuts, peanuts falls in that category, um, so I had to give that up. No, that wasn't fun. <laughs> it was a big adjustment. I, I love peanuts very much, but I've learned to uh, uh, switch to uh, almonds and almond butter, almond milk. Um, also learned later that I was lactose intolerant. That came much later. Um, so I pretty much gave up dairy for the most part. Not entirely, but uh, for the most part. Um, so that, that helped. And uh, um, well, we had other, oh, mold allergy too. So I was eating lots of mushrooms and I was having asthma symptoms. We were wondering why. Uh, well, it was because I was consuming mold and I wasn't supposed to be. So I um, had to watch that also. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's tough to make these adjustments. And I, you know, anyone that has food allergies, you, I would urge you to be very cautious about um, eating things that you're allergic to. You can cause allergic reactions. You can have uh, uh, situations where uh, you need uh, emergency uh, epinephrine. Um, some people carry EpiPens, uh, but they have different uh, epinephrines carried by uh, different companies now. So that's just one of the trade names. But um, anyway, so, you know, in about 1979, 1980, I learned that I had asthma was playing football at the time, uh, wanted to keep playing football. And my doctor told me that, uh, no, you, you uh, really need to stop playing football. You don't have the build for it and you're gonna get killed on the football field. Somebody's gonna knock you out. And, um, you know, I was worried about me getting hurt, uh, you know, possible injuries, concussions, things like that. So um, wasn't very happy about that, but I listened to the doctor. Um, made the adjustment to running. The doctor suggested I try running. Wasn't so sure about that at the time, but I uh, decided to give it a shot. And for a while, I couldn't even run a quarter mile. And I was running with my dad and my brothers and, uh, you know, they encouraged me and they were uh, in better shape. And so they uh, were able to uh, encourage me to keep, keep at it. Um, finally, by the time I got into high school, I was running better. I uh, ran in track, ran cross country, was captain of the cross country team my senior year. Was on a two mile relay with my brother, um, but I was always dissatisfied that his 800 was always faster than mine. 
he just had more fast twitch much muscles and we didn't know it at the time but i i had all the slow twitch muscles it took me a long time to figure that out but uh um, and of course we joke with each other, uh, each other anytime someone dropped their baton whose fault that was um, because I think we had some handoffs, at least one handoff between us that didn't go well. <laughs> so we debated who uh, dropped the baton. Um, but anyway, I got to uh, college, kept running, became serious about running in uh, high school. Um, by the time I got to college, I uh, kept running, got into a running class in college. And the teacher was an experienced marathoner, and he talked to me about running marathons, and he, he had run the Dallas Marathon many times, and uh, I think served as a race volunteer when he didn't run it. And he told me, look, you, uh, you could do this. You're, it wouldn't require many more miles than you're already doing. You'd have to tweak your workout schedule in a couple ways I'm going to show you. Maybe add some speed work and that type of thing. So I started making those adjustments and, you know, suddenly the TCU track team is trying to recruit me to run track. <laughs> and I had to explain, no, no, you know, you, you guys don't run far enough. I need to, you know, if, if it were the cross country team, I might be more interested. They run, I think they were running seven mile uh, courses back then when I was in college. But anyway, uh, so I rebuffed the track team, told them I wasn't interested, kept pressing on. 1988, I ran my first full marathon, the Dallas Marathon. Uh, went better than usual, had a big chip on my shoulder about asthma at the time, and uh, that helped me break through um, and realize that I could um, actually uh, um, complete a full marathon. And uh, so things took off from there. Year after that, I ran a, uh, my second marathon, ran a, a minute faster. And uh, that one was a special one because I ran a 326 and uh, I haven't been able to touch that pace since. <laughs> you know, you, you get into into your 40s, you, you don't have the, the leg speed that you did in your 20s unless you're uh, working out a whole heck of a lot and maybe doing significantly more speed work, training smarter too. Um, but I've, I kept running marathons. I'm up to 15 full marathons now. Um, and last uh, last fall, I reached a point with my asthma. I've been seeing an asthma doctor since 1979, 1980, and uh, you know everyone. It, it's a roller coaster. You know your you, your symptoms are uh, being managed well, and then you find you check with your peak flow meter, and you realize you know maybe they're not being managed as well as uh, you hope, and. Uh, so, I mean, there are days where your, your life is uh, literally ruled by, by this, by your inhaler and whether you have it with you or not and whether it's full. And um, um, so by, by August, I was training for my first ultra, a 50K, and I was struggling a little bit and I couldn't figure out why. And so my asthma doctor checked and um, sure enough, my lungs unexpectedly had inflammation um, so, um, that required some additional medication, and I think the medication was, uh, um, I think it's Flovent. Um, I have to bring that out here with me to you, show you. Uh, yes, it is Flovent. It's the orange inhaler. Some of you have maybe seen this before. Um, you know, the, the red one is the, uh, uh, the Pro Air, um, Ventolin. That's more of the rescue inhaler. The Flovent is uh, not not a rescue inhaler at all. That's uh, for treating it when you're having more severe symptoms. So um, went on Flovent a little more. Um, decided to get more serious about uh, uh, diet and exercise. Um, learned a while back that I also had uh, high cholesterol. So and at the you know so for a while I was just giving up meat on uh, Fridays. Uh, wasn't eating any meat on Fridays and decided to give it up on Mondays too. There's a meatless Monday movement uh, that's been very helpful in uh, avoiding meat. So, you know, avoiding those uh, uh, and also steering clear of dairy, I found my asthma symptoms uh, got a little better. And um, so I, you know, in August I was not doing very well with asthma. I was ready to crush it any way that I could. And so uh, now I came up with a crush asthma hashtag. And uh, so I've been using that on social media to help people that are uh, uh, asthmatic. There's also an asthmatics unite hashtag 
that if you haven't seen it, a lot of us uh, that have asthma are using that also uh, to help find each other and support each other. Um, so it got to, uh, you know, about September of last year, um, started making some other changes, uh, got serious about dumping processed food. Um, and, uh, you know, in October, I ran my first ultra, ran a 50K, and uh, that went well, and it was uh, faster than expected. Um, it was about a 515 or something like that. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, by that point, I, I started a run streak. This is the 648th day of the run streak. And I know a lot of my asthmatic improvement has been uh, due to that also, just being more active. And I, on Mondays, I maybe just run a mile. So you're getting a restful recovery day every week. And I just try to carefully balance, you know, a hard day, an easy day, alternating, making sure you're not stacking hard days back to back, because um, you don't want to do that and uh, um, have additional problems. So um, really the, um, um, uh, one of the things that uh, helped me with uh, nutrition, um, well, before I do that, I, I want to, um, I want to show you, uh, for people that have asthma or allergies, there are a couple websites I want to show you here on my computer where you can check the uh, pollen count and also check there's an asthma index. And I don't want to forget to do this, so I'm going to um, try to do this real quick. Let's see if I can get my, oh, my computer, of course, is going to sleep. Let me get that back awakened. There we go. Okay, I'm going to flip it and show you asthma.com, azma.com. Just a minute. Okay, you can see uh, the screen here. Um, we live in Lincoln, Nebraska. So you put in your zip code, and sorry about the shadow here, but it shows you uh, uh, the index for uh, asthma for the day. And uh, you can look at that day by day. And I know when I get medium symptoms, they email me the uh, four-day um, they email me the four-day forecast. And I know if it's medium or higher, I've got to be really careful. Um, so that's azma.com is for asthma, and uh, pollen.com is the next one. And this one is uh, oh, you can see we're kind of in the medium pollen zone today, but you see the red. We're going to be in high for going a little closer Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So we've got to be really careful on the weekend. And um, for me, that means kind of more walk breaks. Sometimes it means, you know, maybe cutting uh, 20 to 25% off a run if, if it's a really high pollen day. Usually if it's 11 or higher, we've got to be more careful. Um, so uh, those are a couple of websites I wanted to tell you about. There are others, and I've, you know, there's a mold index that, uh, you know, you can uh, check, like my asthma doctor, um, they will uh, broadcast the mold counts every day. And since I'm allergic to mold, I, that's kind of a triple check. So, but pollen.com and asthma.com will both email you the four day forecast uh, for each so that you're aware of that. And um, uh, let's see, what else I was gonna talk about? Oh, um, made some uh, nutritional changes. I was taking uh, I was taking uh, multivitamins, and I started doing research on that and found that uh, uh, you know those just don't work for a lot of us. You know, in fact, a lot of times we find that they uh, you know they can be detrimental as far as uh, what benefits you can get from them, and so uh, uh, stop taking those. Um, and uh, last fall, I became a, a, a Juice Plus representative. Um, so I have uh, started taking Juice Plus capsules, and I take those every day. I take uh, three of each, and I'll show you those. Hold on, grab them. This again. This, this is the orchard and the garden, garden blend, and the vineyard blend. And it's uh, two capsules a day of each. It's a recommended dosage. And I found that that helped me 
get a lot more of the better uh, nutrition that I was missing out on. Uh, we also have these available in uh, uh, chewables if you don't like capsules. And I was I started making uh, kale smoothies every day, but I was having trouble finding a protein mix that I liked. And so this is the one I use now. It's uh, the Juice Plus Complete Dutch Chocolate. And uh, you know the ingredients are all there. It's uh, pretty high quality stuff. You find a lot of uh, you know um, superfoods on there. You see uh, quinoa and some other um, spirulina, algae, pomegranate powder, um, pea protein, very helpful. Um, but I found that this helped me a lot in uh, um, being serious about what I was. Uh, you know what I was eating, what my body was getting. I realized that uh, um, that nutrition was a really big deal, and that I needed to take it seriously in order to uh, continue to uh, advance as an athlete. So that's been one of my um, keys uh, in keeping the run streak alive and uh, keeping the asthma controlled. It has been well managed since I've uh, um, you know made some of these nutritional changes. Um, I, you know, I try to have a kale smoothie every day. If kale isn't available, I go for spinach or some kind of mixed green, but I try to make sure it's organic. Um, you know, kale that isn't organic, you have some other uh, issues that come up with uh, what you're ingesting and that type of thing. So you want to be careful with that. Um, so I, I'm kind of the guy who uh, shows up at the store and pretty much uh, wipes the kale out off the shelf. Um, and if I, um, you know, if I buy too much of it or if I get too close to expiration date, I just freeze it short term. And as long as you're not freezing it for a long time, it's not a bad, not too bad a thing to do. And then you're putting in frozen kale and you're not having to add as much ice in your um, blender. But I usually add about um, five ounces of kale. You know, I put almond, coconut milk in there, um, quinoa. Um, sometimes I don't cook the quinoa before. I know I, th I think you're supposed to, but... Uh, flaxseed, um, let's see, chia. Um, my, I have a, a special Irish blue kale recipe that's on my blog, which is runninggroovesharp.com. And uh, the Irish version, I add uh, um, McCann's Irish oats, oatmeal. And uh, that just, you know, for people that have cholesterol issues, you have to try to eat oatmeal every day somehow even if you're just throwing it in the blender um, and I don't I don't care if the oatmeal isn't cooked I just throw it in the blender and um, you know it just makes the smoothie it kind of softens the texture a little bit uh, we throw frozen fruit in the blender so there's uh, you know uh, mango um, blueberries are kind of my favorite those are the ones that turn it blue or purple in color um, and you can add all kinds of other things. You can add leftovers or, you know, um, I know you can buy, oh, these bags at Sam's Club. I think they sell bags that have uh, one pound of uh, frozen fruit where you can just throw that one pound in the blender at a time and you kind of have to mash it down a little bit to make sure that you're not uh, breaking your blender and all that, and putting too much, or, uh, you know, put in the, put the frozen fruit in the microwave for a short time so you're, softening it slightly um, but I found the frozen fruit uh, tastes a lot better in the blender than you know throwing three pounds of ice in there that just it's a little more uh, ice than I'd like to have in the blender um, at one time so um, um, I, I noticed you know we have these uh, asthma chats that used to take place on Twitter and they haven't been taking place as often and uh, so hopefully, uh, I'm hoping that more people um, who have asthma or know someone that has asthma will become aware of it. Uh, I'd like to try to discuss it on uh, more of a regular basis. Um, I don't know if every week is practical. Maybe we could do once a month on uh, Periscope or something. And uh, I'd like to try to get some medical professionals involved with that because, um, you know, having medical help in treating your asthma and your allergies is very important and uh, people that try to treat it entirely on their own, you just tend to run into trouble. Um, your symptoms will flare up and uh, you won't know why. And you know, if you're not getting that medical help, your symptoms. So, uh, you know, one thing you can do with asthma, if you have a peak flow meter, you can check your uh, 
you know, your uh, VO2 uh, readings. Um, if you have a Garmin watch, um, you can track your VO2 max. And usually if your VO2 is uh, dipping, um, and sometimes it dips naturally in the summer as pollen counts go up. But if it's dipping more than usual, um, sometimes that's a sign that you're having trouble. And I noticed last summer I was seeing my VO2 max was dropping and um, didn't really understand why. And then I found out, oh, you have this inflammation going on that you didn't know about or couldn't uh, really sense. But I, I could sense it when I was running. I just felt tired and, you know, I talked to my asthma doctor about it and she said, no, when you're running, you should feel awesome. And if you don't and you're relying on your inhaler that much, um, it, it's just an indication of trouble. And so, you know, just tweaking my medication for about a month, it, it made a big difference. And I, I learned to, you know, get back in touch with the symptoms and carefully train for an ultra without, um, you know, pushing the asthma um, button too far and uh, um, allowing things to fall apart. So, but I, I'm here to, um, help or talk to any of you that might have uh, asthma and allergies about how we can better uh, kind of run through those. I am working on writing a book called, uh, it's tentatively called Running Through Through Asthma, and uh, that may not be the final title, but that's the working title. But I want people to know what my journey is, hoping to inspire um, people that have asthma to understand that they can reach higher and uh, really try to um, live the life of their dreams and uh, uh, reach for um, new heights. You know, for a long time, you know, I thought marathons would be the longest race I would run. And I have a friend uh, um, named Phil McCarthy, who's an elite ultra marathoner. And uh, I actually asked him, he was a sprinter in high school, and so I told him, well, you, you should run a marathon sometime. You might like it. And he laughed at me and he said, oh, I would never do that. That's, that's ridiculous. I'm a sprinter. I have all these high twitch, you know, um, fast twitch muscles and the slow twitch muscles required. I'm not sure they're there. And well, guess what? It turned out they were there. They were there. And so after he became an elite ultra marathoner, he talked to me and he said, well, you know, you've, you've been running all these marathons, but you really should run an ultra marathon. And he even had one picked out called uh, Bohemian Alps in Nebraska, which is <laughs> an extremely challenging hilly course. It's still on my bucket list, but I have a long bucket list. So, um, you know, the Great Wall of China Marathon is on there too. So, um, but I, you know, so I, I finally gave in. I said, okay, I'll, I'll run an ultra. I, you know, it scared me a little bit, but I decided sometimes you got to scare yourself a little bit to reach new heights. And, uh, and he, he was right. Uh, you know, that, um, that ability is there. And I think that just goes to show that, um, you know, so many of us, we think we have these limits and that, but they're artificial. Their, their limits are in our mind. And if you can get out your get out of your mind and really think about what's up here and not so much what's in here, you, you can do amazing things. And trust me, I, you know, I didn't think I'd ever run um, a marathon period and to find that I'm, you know, running ultras and, um, you know, keeping this run streak intact and, um, just finding new strength from running and uh, being smart about nutrition. Um, also sleep. Um, sleep, if, you know, another issue with asthmatics, we, we do get a lot of uh, interruption of our sleep. The symptoms will flare up at night, not entirely at night, but sometimes the nighttime symptoms will wake up and we'll be wheezing and uh, not be able to get back to sleep uh, because of the symptoms. So, uh, um, you know, I've learned, to, you know, there's a nighttime medicine called Montelukast, and uh, I think that's a generic, I, I don't remember what the, the drug went off patent, and so that's the generic name, but that nighttime medicine for asthma, you know, it's by prescription only, and the doctor has prescribed that to me, and that does help. Um, the only problem is remembering to take it every day. Um, and I, you know, I find when I forget, sometimes the symptoms will flare up a little more. So, um, you know, I'd encourage those of you that do have asthma medication to, to stick with it. Um, don't want to over-medicate yourself. And sometimes the doctor will help you figure out, 
you know, at what level of uh, asthma medication you need, you know, wh whether you just need one inhaler or uh, two or, you know, or more for some people, you know, you get, you get to be older, some people have uh, uh, COPD and, you know, then you're looking at three inhalers or more and that's an entirely different situation. But I, you know, I do have a very strong interest in trying to crush asthma, not only for me, but for anyone else that I can help do that through any way, whether it's through uh, uh, discussions, chats, uh, coaching. I, I am a RRCA uh, certified running coach, um, so helping people in that capacity to uh, uh, break through, um, help asthmatics figure out what they need to do to, uh, um, you know, to adjust their training schedule and make it practical. And again, I'm not trying to treat it as a doctor because I'm not a doctor. Um, we we leave that to the professionals. And my you know, um, my wife is a pharmacist, so she deals with uh, respiratory therapists a lot and teaches uh, uh, classes on respiratory therapy type of issues. Um, but just trying to inspire people that do have asthma and allergies that uh, to know that you're you're not alone. You can get help. Um, help is everywhere. You just kind of have to look for it sometimes. And I'd, I'd really encourage you to try different things with uh, nutrition, to uh, steer clear of your allergens, not only the food allergens, but the environmental uh, pollen, mold, um, cigarette smoke. Um, <laughs> cigarette smoke's been a huge uh, battle of my life. I've... Uh, um, you know, I've never smoked, uh, partly because I have asthma and I, I have hypersensitivity to that because of uh, the asthma symptoms. So, you know, I actually helped lobby to get the smoking ban passed in Lincoln, Nebraska, our hometown. And eventually that led to a statewide ban in Nebraska. Um, but the, still, people don't realize how that affects people with uh, asthma, uh, allergies, COPD, um, you know, the cigarettes being carcinogens, uh, not only the people that are smoking them, but to the people that are ingesting the cigarette smoke uh, from them uh, secondarily. So um, so I'd encourage those of you who uh, might be smokers to uh, quit. Um, there, there's help to do that too. And um, But I just really wanted to encourage all of you to, to do everything you can to uh, um, uh, link arms with those of us who have asthma and allergies. They're significant challenges. They flare up. Sometimes you feel like they're not even there. You know, if, if you're managing things well, you, you can go weeks or months forgetting that you have it. And then suddenly you're, you're just knocked on your back and you're, you're told that you have to, you know, do this routine all the time. And, um, you know, then you just feel helpless and powerless and, um, but we don't have to live that way. And, um, you know, I was supposed to go see my asthma doctor again in uh, December. Um, I haven't done that yet. I, I still haven't told her that I ran a 50K. I wonder what she's going to think. Um, oh, and then in January, I ran a 50K in one day, but that's kind of a different story. That was, <laughs> that, that had to do with a special challenge that I um, am not authorized to completely talk about. So... <laughs> I'll just suffice it to say that I ran 50k in one day on January 31st, um, four runs on the treadmill and, and one in the snow outside because the treadmill stopped. So, um, but I'm hoping to run another ultra sometime, hoping to maybe run uh, training for a half marathon in uh, um, Laughlin, uh, Nevada. Um, part of that uh, race is uh, also in Arizona, so it's a two state race, two time zones. Um, but looking forward to that and um, just wanted to let you all, all of you know uh, the importance of uh, asthma awareness. Um, almost all of us know someone that has asthma or allergies or both and uh, I, I would just urge you to be patient with those of us that have it. Um, sometimes we're not very patient with our symptoms. We get angry and upset and um, you know just try to bear with us and uh, help support us in any way and you know once we get those symptoms managed uh, we can go out and uh, do some great things inspire each other 
and uh, ha have a much more awesome life. So uh, um, just wanted to encourage all of you to, um, uh, to be aware of asthma, um, to take your medication if, you're, if you have asthma, to steer clear of your allergies. And, uh, you know, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can read my blog at uh, runninggrooveshark.com. Um, and I'm also available for uh, um, on Twitter at Jeremy P. Murphy, P. S. and Patrick. Um, so those are probably the two best uh, places to reach me. I'm also on uh, Google Plus and Facebook, and but really Twitter is kind of my one of my favorite um, social media. Um, so please uh, feel free to contact me and uh, look me up if you want to talk about asthma further or if you want to be involved in further asthma chats or receive notices of these. I'm hoping that we can activate them again on Twitter. It just seemed like, you know, a, an asthma chat about once a year is just not enough for something that's this significant. And uh, I don't know, maybe the medical community somehow hasn't made me aware of when they are and I try to keep track of that, but hopefully we could at least get that um, going maybe quarterly or so because we have we just have a heck of a lot of millions of people with asthma and allergies and um, really struggling and not knowing what to do or how to manage their symptoms and I'm, I'm just I'm a living example that you can change things by being smart being smart about your nutrition uh, hydration sleep avoiding your allergens um, you know and and backing off on your workouts when you see the either A, the uh, pollen count is high, or B, the, uh, you know, the asthma.com tells you you've got a problem, or if you're allergic to mold, um, you know, that the mold index, index might be high. So, um, you know, just keep track of those. If you do have asthma or allergies, feel free to check out those websites. The, uh, the pollen one is, again, it's pollen.com, and the asthma one is asthma.com, azma.com. So uh, check those out. And I wanted to thank all of you for joining us and uh, hope you have an awesome day. Um, I guess our, uh, our bonus discussion today would be on uh, what I should do with this zucchini. Should I grill it? Should I do something else? What do you think? It's, it's huge. I mean, you know, we're talking way more zucchini muffins than I think our family could eat. So, but maybe we'll grill it and have a uh, neighborhood party or something. So, um, anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, hope you have an awesome Friday and a great weekend. Take care and uh, go chase your dreams. Um, I'm here to support you in uh, reaching them and I, I know you do the same for me. Thanks. Bye.